good day everyone. Earlier in this chapter, we've looked into monohybrid inheritance and dihybrid inheritance. Now, we're going to continue into extension of Mendelian genetics. In extensions of Mendelian genetics, the inheritance pattern differs from the simple Mendelian genetics. Offspring produced at F2 do not show a 3 to 1 ratio for a single gene or will it show 9331 ratio for two or more genes as in the Mendel's genetics. So under extension of Mendelian genetics, we're going to look into incomplete dominance, co-dominance, multiple alleles, as well as epistasis and polygenic inheritance. Degree of dominance. Incomplete dominance. Phenotype of heterozygous for F1 is identical to the homozygous dominant parent. This is what we would usually see when looking at simple Mendelian genetics. Let's say we cross a parent with purple flower. If this was a pea plant with a white flower. That is also homozygous. So this is homozygous dominant and this is homozygous recessive. Then gametes produced would be capital P and small p. And what we get at F1 is a heterozygous yet producing purple flower. So this is in the case of complete dominance. However, relationships of alleles can be rather complex and one member of a pair of alleles may not be completely dominant over the other. So now this gives rise to incomplete dominance and co-dominance. In incomplete dominance, this is when the phenotype of heterozygous for F1 is an intermediate to both the parents, when the parents is a homozygous state of either alleles. And in co-dominance, this is when the phenotype of heterozygous for F1 is a mixture of both the homozygous parents when the parents are homozygous state of either alleles. Incomplete dominance occur when neither alleles of a gene is completely dominant over the other. This causes both alleles to be expressed partially. And a cross between two homozygous parents with two different phenotypes, that is being homozygous state of either alleles, produce heterozygous offspring with an intermediate phenotype of the parental trait. Examples of incomplete dominance is flower color in snapdragon plants and in four o'clock plants. Now, in the snapdragon plants, flower color is controlled by two alleles, which is CR for red flower and CW for white flower. In this slide, we can see that when a homozygous red flowered snapdragon was crossed with a homozygous white flowered snapdragon, the F1 generation produced plants with all pink flowers. Now, pink flower is actually the intermediate phenotype of the red and white flowers, and it is a heterozygous with genotype CRCW. If we were to allow this F1 generation to self fertilize, or if we were to cross the F1 with other F1s, then working down the Ponet square at F2, genotypic ratio obtained is 1 CRCR, 2 CRCW, and 1 CWCW. So this gives rise to phenotypic ratio of 1 red flower two pink flower and one white flower. So the ratio here is one, two, and one, and not the three is to one ratio that we would normally get in monohybrid inheritance.
codominance occur when alleles of a gene are equally dominant. Now, this causes both alleles to be expressed equally and simultaneously or together. The two alleles each affect the phenotype in separate distinguishable ways and a cross between two homozygous parents with two different phenotypes, that is homozygous state of either alleles, to produce heterozygous offspring with a third phenotype that is a mixture of both parental traits. And this mixture or this third phenotype is not intermediate. It is a mixture with both the characteristic of parents. Now, examples of co-dominance is coat color in cattle, blood types in human, and sickle cell trait. This diagram shows a cattle with patches of red and white hairs known as roan. So in cattle, coat color is controlled by two alleles with R being allele for red hair and W representing allele for white hair. So when a homozygous uh, parent for both allele is crossed, this is parent, parent with red hair cross with another parent which is white hair so homozygous uh, for both alleles is rr for red hair and ww for white hair so from there you will get your gametes being this and at f1 these are rw rw is heterozygous heterozygous with color road. Road is patches of red and patches of white, just like what is seen or observed in the parents. If we were to self fertilize this F1 RW, road with another road, and you do your gametes, alright, and when you do your Punnett square. So here, your phenotypic ratio is red, brown, brown, and white. So at F2, your genotypic ratio is 1, RR, 2, RW and 1WW as of phenotypy ratio. This is 1 red, 2 rounds, and 1 white hair cattle. Alright, so again, this ratio is 1 to 1. And it is not like the ones you see in the simple Mendelians, which is 3 is 2, 1. Another example of codominance is blood types in human. As we know, the human blood group is A, B, AB, and O. And this is based on the presence or absence of antigen on the plasma membrane of red blood cell. So the Blood cell antigen is coded by gene isohemagglutinogen, which is represented by the letter I. So there are three alleles for this, which is IA for presence of antigen A, IB for presence of antigen B, and I where no antigen is present. And for IA and IB, they are co-dominant to each other with Allele I being recessive to both IA and IB. So this table shows you the allele and the antigens that are present. And then IA and IB 
which is actually co-dominant to each other. So whenever there is IA and there is IB, then this would give rise to both antigens being present and therefore contributes to the IB blood group. Sickle cell trait is another example for codominance. Sickle cell trait is due to substitution of a single amino acid in the hemoglobin protein of red blood cells. So the gene for hemoglobin is represented by two alleles being HbA for normal hemoglobin and HbS for sickle cell hemoglobin. And these two are codominant to each other. So homozygous individuals with genotype HbA, HbA is normal. Heterozygous individuals with genotype HbA, HbS are the ones with the sickle cell trait. And individuals with HbS, HbS are the ones that are sickle cell disease. Individuals with sickle cell disease, their genotype is HBS. HBS, in these individuals, all their red blood cells is sickle in shape. And for the sickle cell trait, the genotype is HBA, HBS as being co-dominant here. And 50% of red blood cell is sickle shape, with another 50% being normal. So individuals that are sickle cell disease, they experience weaknesses, anemia, pain, fever, organ damage, or could even lead to death, which means that it is fatal. For the sickle cell trait, uh, they are usually healthy with some slight symptoms of what is experienced by the sickle cell uh, disease. And in fact, there is advantages where the sickle cell trait individuals are actually uh, less susceptible to malaria because the uh, sickle hemoglobins do not support uh, the parasite for malaria, which is plasmodium. Let us now look into multiple alleles. Now this occurs when a gene exists in three or more alleles occupying the same locus on a pair of homologous chromosomes. So a gene can only be represented twice or two times or by two alleles with one allele on the locus of each of the chromosomes. So supposing this is a homologous chromosome. This is the locus for the allele, although there might be more than two alleles, but at any one time, only two alleles can represent the gene. Okay, so the common example for multiple alleles is blood types in human. And as we know, in the blood group, there are three alleles being IA, IB, and I. And with the presence of three alleles here, there is possibility of getting six genotypes because IA and IA, there is IA and I because A and B is dominant to I, then there is IB. IB, IB, I, and then there is codominance, which occurs among the IA and IB, as well as I. So here, there are six genotypes for the ABA blood group in human, which gives rise to 
the A blood group, the B blood group, the AB blood group, and the O blood group. So here there are four phenotypes. All these six genotypes and four phenotypes arise from there being more than two alleles. Three alleles for the ABA, ABO blood group in human. Epistasis is a type of gene interaction that influences phenotype. These genes, they occupy different locus on separate chromosomes and are inherited independently. The presence of a gene at one locus could actually alter, prevent, mask, or even suppress the expression of a different gene at a second locus. So because of this, sometimes the epistatic genes is also known as inhibiting genes. So one of the popular uh, examples for epistasis is coat color in a breed of dog known as Labrador Retrievers or Labradors or Labs. So this dog is best known for their obedience, loyalty and frequently trained to assist people with blindness or even do detection work for enforcement agencies. So here, coat color in Labradors is represented by two different genes. The first gene is a gene for pigment. It determines the pigment color in the hair, either being black or brown, which is represented by capital B allele for black and small b allele for brown. And here you can tell that black is dominant over brown and then there is the second gene which is a gene for depositing color now this determines whether the pigment will be deposited in the hair or not and capital E represents allele for deposition of black or brown pigment and small letter E for no deposition of pigment and as you can see here for um, allele deposition the allele for deposition is dominant over the allele of for no deposition. What we would need to bear in mind is the presence of epistatic gene and in the case of coat color in Labradors, the gene that codes for deposition of pigments is epistatic to the gene that codes for coat color and whenever a homozygous recessive E appears, this would result in yellow coat color regardless of the gene that codes for coat color and <clears throat> for the three phenotypes given, black, Labradors, brown Labradors, and golden Labradors, we can list down the genotypes. For brown, and these are all the genotypes for the Labradors. Crossing two black Labradors that are heterozygous for both genes produces phenotypic ratio of 9 black, 3 brown and 4 yellow Labradors in the F1 generation. 
Polygenic inheritance occurs when multiple two or more genes have similar and additive effects on a single phenotypic character. The character continuously varies in the population as we could see in examples like skin pigmentation in humans and heights in humans and this is said as continuous variation in phenotype. Now polygenic inheritance is associated with continuous variation and we could also see that this continuous variation is affected by environmental factors such as sun exposure towards skin pigmentation and nutrition towards height in humans. A closer look at skin pigmentation as an example. So skin pigmentation in humans is controlled by many separately inherited genes. To simplify the concept, we will just consider three genes being A, B and C. Now each gene has an allele for dark skin which contributes one unit of darkness to the phenotype. So dark skin alleles are capital A, capital B and capital C. They are in completely dominant to the alleles for small a, small b and small c. And all these alleles have a cumulative effect. Now, genotypes given here, this and this, would make the same genetic contributions to dark skin tone, which is three units because there is three capital letter here and three capital letter here so basically if we were to look at a person in terms of phenotypes there would actually be six units of darkness in this first skin tone zero unit of darkness in the second skin tone and three units of darkness in the last skin tone. So we would categorize it as very dark, very light and intermediate skin tones. But in reality, there is a lot of genes contributing to skin pigmentation. And because this is polygenic inheritance, these genes are sometimes referred to as polygenes. Shown in this diagram is a cross between heterozygous individuals for skin tone. And in F1 generation, there appears to be seven phenotypes for skin tone. Altogether, seven phenotypes here. And at this point of time, we are only considering three alleles. Should there be an increase in the number of alleles, then there would actually be an increase in the number of phenotypes. Distribution of phenotype resembles a bell-shaped curve when being plotted, known as normal distribution. Environmental factors such as sun exposure would further affect the skin tone, and this ensures a continuous variation in the phenotype. This diagram shows a normal distribution bell-shaped curve for heights in humans.